Madam Speaker, last week, President Biden presented his State of the Union address, and uh, the reviews from the public show it to be the most poorly received of any that's ever been, uh, where that's ever been measured when the State of the Union has appeared on television. And, and it's no secret why. You know, the president's tone and his general approach to the address really encapsulated why a lot of people are so turned off by the work, uh, by politics and the work of, of our government these days, is that the partisanship and the, uh, the eagerness to cast blame and to scapegoat rather than to seek uh, common ground uh, and find solutions is exactly why so many people are so frustrated with the direction of our country. But on top of that, the president said a lot of things that just simply did not accord with reality. And so today I wanted to present the 10 most false and least misleading statements from President Biden's State of the Union address. First, near the beginning of his speech, President Biden said, not since President Lincoln and the Civil War have freedom and democracy been under assault here at home as they are today. Well, I'm afraid that President Biden has a very short memory because we all just lived through the COVID era. Starting in March of 2020, the most basic freedoms and tenets of democracy were not just insulted in this country, they vanished entirely in many places. Governors like Gavin Newsom in California declared the legislative branch abolished and barricaded Capitol buildings. This Capitol itself was barricaded, ruling by executive decree, even threatening to declare martial law. Citizens were not allowed to leave their homes. Businesses were not allowed to open their doors. Children were not allowed to go to school or play sports. People of faith were not allowed to worship or even gather for Bible study. Beaches were declared off limits. Curfews were imposed, even for adults having dinner with one other couple in a private residence. Pedestrians were tackled, literally, for not wearing masks, walking around outdoors. Employees were fired from their jobs, kids were expelled from school, and consumers were banned from coffee shops over their personal medical decisions. Social media users were suspended for deviating from the government-approved narrative, even if they happened to present true information. Now, it's understandable why Biden would like to pretend that none of this ever happened, but we all lived through it, and the scars will be with our country for a very long time. A second related statement that the president made is that the pandemic no longer controls our lives. The truth is the pandemic never controlled our lives. It was government actions in response to the pandemic that controlled our lives. And if you look at the data now, where you had different states that took very different approaches to dealing with COVID, what we've learned is that states like California, which had by far the worst lockdowns and restrictions on personal freedom, where people's lives were controlled far more than in any other state, actually had among the worst public health outcomes as well. And so now what you see on the part of many, and in particular the Biden administration, is that it's very clear that this was in many ways the worst set of policy decisions uh, our country has seen in modern times. Uh, restrictions on personal liberty, damage to our economy, damage to our children was all done for absolutely no reason. So there's this attempt to pretend that none of this ever even occurred, which is what the president's remark in his State of the Union uh, is an example of. But even more so, look at the testimony of members of this administration before Congress this term. You had Education Secretary Miguel Cardona, who gave false testimony to our committee, the Education and the Workforce Committee, when he claimed that he never encouraged states to adopt student vaccine mandates, when he did precisely that and encouraged states to adopt student vaccine mandates. Or you had uh, Health and Human Services Secretary Becerra, who claimed in testimony before our committee that he never forced anyone to do anything and didn't impose a toddler mask mandate when in fact Head Start, which is under his jurisdiction, did have a mask mandate for two-year-olds and up that flew in the face of even the policy of the European counterparts of the CDC and the World Health Organization. Mr. Becerra, by the way, could not point to one public health benefit of that policy. 
You also had Douglas Parker, who's the head of OSHA, in testimony before my subcommittee, claim that the Biden administration never tried to do an employer vaccine mandate, when in fact they tried to do just that, which would have applied to tens of millions of Americans if the United States Supreme Court had not struck it down. The third statement from President Biden was his statement that he's already cut the federal deficit by over $1 trillion. This is just plainly numerically false. When President Biden took office, the national debt was $27.8 trillion. Today, it is $34.2 trillion. In just a few years, it's gone from $27.8 trillion to $34.2 trillion. And the reason is no mystery. The president went on a massive spending spree with uh, bills passed that included multiple trillion dollar increases in spending, which of course has not only increased the debt beyond anything we've ever seen, but is what triggered this inflation crisis that is still causing so many American families to struggle. Which brings me to the next statement of the president's during the State of the Union, which is now our economy is the envy of the world. Far from being the envy of the world, our economy is a source of great dissatisfaction from the folks who live in our country. A recent New York Times poll asked, do you think the economy is better or worse than it was four years ago, or is it about the same? 21% said it's better, 63% said it's worse. Three times as many people said the economy is worse today than it was four years ago. The Times poll also asked, thinking about the nation's economy, how would you rate economic conditions today? 8% or 28% said either excellent or good. 72% said only fair or poor. 28% to 72%. A related statement from the President's State of the Union was that wages keep going up and inflation keeps coming down. Both are demonstrably false. In fact, since President Biden took office, uh, real wages and take-home pay have decreased in some sense because folks uh, are not getting the uh, same number of hours that they used to be getting. And when it comes to inflation, here are just a few statistics for you. Prices uh, today, uh, at this point, compared to three years ago. The price of gasoline has gone up by over 33%. The price of hotel rooms by 31%. The price of household energy by 29%. The price of transportation by 27%. The price of airfare by 23%. The price of groceries by 21%. The price of restaurant meals by 20%. The price of used vehicles, new vehicles, housing, rent, overall inflation, personal care, furniture, all in the high teens. The list goes on. And here's the thing, the president's statement that inflation is coming down, that is not any source of great, uh, you know, personal satisfaction uh, or encouragement for folks who are having to deal with these prices. The chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, recently noted, we don't expect to see a decline in the overall price level. That doesn't tend to happen in economies. We don't expect to see a decline in the overall price level. It has not happened yet, and it's not going to happen according to the chairman of the Federal Reserve. The uh, irresponsible uh, spending policies of this administration have unleashed inflation and a rise in prices uh, that is not going away uh, for American families. In President Biden's State of the Union, he also said that to remain the strongest economy in the world, we need the best education system in the world. The problem is that this president's policies have made it more difficult for us to have a good education system, let alone the best education system in the world. Last week we held a hearing in the Education Committee on charter schools, which have been shown across the board to produce tremendous results in expanding opportunity and lowering achievement gaps in increasing uh, student achievement across the board. And yet one of the first things that the Biden administration did as soon as he took office is to go after charter schools and cut charter school grants.
Not to mention the school shutdowns that were uh, enacted across this country in states like California. And this president never came out and did a single thing to get governors like Gavin Newsom to let kids come back and go back to school. And we're going to be dealing with the harms from these school shutdowns from a very, very long time. Perhaps the biggest domestic policy mistake, uh, if we look at all the mistakes during COVID, perhaps there was no bigger one than the school shutdown that did so much harm to so many kids. President Biden also stated in my first day in office, I introduced a, compl a comprehensive plan to fix our immigration system, secure the border. He did no such thing. He did quite the contrary on his very first day in office and his first days in office with dozens of executive actions that made the border less secure. And the results were utterly predictable. We now have 8 million illegal border crossings since the president took office. He set the all-time record in his first year, he broke that record in his second year, and he broke that record in his third year. For several years, going back to 2014, before he took office, there had only been five months, a handful of months out of all of those months and all those years, where you had more than 100,000 people come across the border illegally. That number has been, that figure has been met each and every month since President Biden took office. And so you can look and look at exactly what he did and, and trace these consequences to that change in policy, those unilateral change, uh, changes in policy, where he ended the migrant protection protocols uh, remain in Mexico. He reinstituted, he instituted catch and release. He ended Title 42. He ended the border emergency. He completely uh, distorted and warped the parole and asylum systems to let tens of thousands of people uh, into the country. These are the things that he did when he took office. The idea that he came into office and proposed fixing our system and securing the border could not be out more out of touch with reality. The president also stated that he's ready to fix it, referring to the border. That's what he said, I'm ready to fix it. If he was ready to fix it, he would have fixed it. He would have reversed the unilateral actions that he took when he became president that have caused this unprecedented number of people to come across the border. What's more, he could provide encouragement for the Senate to pass the Secure the Border Act, H.R. 2, which we passed in the House towards the very beginning of last year, yet has been gathering dust over in the Senate. And the president hasn't done that. If he was truly ready to fix it, if he was ready to fix the crisis at our border, he would have done so. The ninth false and misleading statement from the president's remarks are that violent crime has fallen to its lowest level in the last 50 years. In reality, violent crime still has not gone back to what it was uh, before COVID. And what's more, property crime has skyrocketed across the country, including a huge increase in vehicle thefts. On the uh, Judiciary Committee, we've held field hearings in Manhattan, in Chicago, right here in Washington, D.C., where we have seen the absolute uh, horrifying amounts of violent crime and number of victims uh, that are being created as a result. We see cities in California, like Los Angeles, in San Francisco, and Oakland, where they're literally collapsing. In Oakland, the governor, Newsom, just sent in uh, extra law enforcement because the crime there is so out of control. In Los Angeles, the pre police will tell you, don't go outside wearing your jewelry if you want to avoid uh, getting mugged. In San Francisco, or in Oakland rather, uh, the uh, In-N-Out just closed its first ever restaurant because it wasn't safe for their customers and their consumers. In Oakland, Taco Bell just announced its four restaurants. They're no longer gonna have indoor dining. They're no longer going to accept cash. In San Francisco, we see more and more businesses leaving uh, each and every day. Even the store that inspired Toy Story that's been there for decades recently closed as well. And the final truly misleading statement from the president that for many, many Americans could not be more false is when he said that tonight we can proudly say the state of our union is strong. Americans overwhelmingly disagree with that statement. They are overwhelmingly dissatisfied with the direction of the country. It's time for change. It's time for a new direction. And my hope is that the president would have recognized that, would have acknowledged his mistakes when it comes to the economy, when it comes to the border, when it comes to public safety, and proposed a new direction, proposed turning the page. And I would have been very happy to work with him if he had done that. And I am still happy to work with him in any way possible 
if it's going to be good, if it's going to uh, change the, his approach to the economy and to immigration uh, and to crime and to several other areas. But unfortunately, we have not seen that yet. And as someone who comes from California, I can tell you where we're going because we've already seen it play out in California. This president continues to copy California's failed policies. He believes Gavin Newsom when Newsom says that California is a model for the nation. But in fact, California is losing people each and every day. It's very sad. The state where anyone used, it used to be the state anyone could get ahead has now become the state so many can't wait to leave behind. For the fourth straight year, we've led the nation in one-way U-Haul rentals. And if Joe Biden's administration continues to copy California's policies, we're going to see similar results for the entire country.